have to do is go to Google and simply type in blogger.com. When you type in blogger.com, you will see the option, the orange button, create your blog. Now, I'm signed into my daughter's account right now um, because I needed uh, an account that had never created a blog before so you could see it from the beginning, what it looks like. Now, I'm not gonna be a professional blogger. I'm not gonna use my Google Plus profile. I'm just gonna create a limited blogger profile and my display name, let's just say my display name for today, actually, I'll go ahead and put Heather Worrell, and I'm gonna to continue to blogger. So what I say in Google world is all the good buttons are blue. In blogger world, all the good buttons are orange, so you're always looking for that orange button. Now, when you get to blogger, I'm gonna scroll over, and you will see the option to create a new blog. So this is where you title your blog. If I wanted to make a blog for my school, let's just call it Purple Cow Academy. And I'm going to call it Purple Cow Academy. Let me see if I can spell. Uh, .blogspot.com. Now, it's checking the availability. Apparently, I've already used this as a demo before. I'm going to call it Purple Cow Academy 1. So a lot of times, schools will have a name for their blog. Um, and it'll come up unavailable, so they'll have to try a couple times to find one that hasn't previously been claimed. At this point, you have several different themes. When I work initially with the principal, I always go with the simple theme. Brooke, why are you laughing at me? I see you smiling down there. <laughs> I'm laughing because Wes's face is on your camera, so I think if you just click on yours, we'll be able to see you. Wes was making some funny faces, and it was just cracking me up. <laughs> yeah, he normally does have a funny face to make when I start talking. So, <laughs> Helen. Okay, I'm actually going to click on your face. I don't see my face down here. So, how about that? Oh, no. <laughs> ah, okay. So, now we're at the point where you choose a theme. Um, I always choose the orange simple theme when I work with the principal for the first time. So, choose simple and then click create blog. And welcome to your digital infrastructure. And I'm not going to create a Google domain right now, so I'm just going to click no thanks. But if that's something you're interested in, you could. So this is what it looks like when you get to Blogger. Over here on the left side, it's very similar looking to like a Google Drive. But the very first thing you're going to want to do is lock this down to um, and make it private. So to do that, just like in Google world, you look for this little wheel or cog or whatever that thing's called. What do you, what do you call that, Brooke? What do you call the settings wheel? I, I call that a gear. A gear. gear. Heather, go ahead and unmute yourself for us. Sorry, okay, so you'll notice um, after you, did you guys catch the part over here about the gear and the wheel? Okay, so when you click on the wheel or the gear, the settings, you'll notice uh, this is where if you ever decide to change the name of your blog, it's right here, you would just click edit. You could give your blog a description. You could say the digital infrastructure for the awesome purple cows at the Purple Cow Academy or whatever your school may be called. Um, down here, if you decide to change the address of your blog, you will notice um, right here, you can edit that as well. Let me find, let me scroll over a little bit. I'm on two screens, okay. Heather, can I jump in real quick and, yeah, and give right. a plug? Um, yeah. The Google Certified Educator exam covers basics of Blogger. So that's another great way to kind of dive into Blogger and then go into, um, you know, some deeper Blogger sort of tricks and tips in the level two exam. So Blogger is covered as an additional service in, the, in that curriculum. So just another option for you out there. Awesome. Okay. So, um, so on the settings, we were looking at the basic and I'm having trouble scrolling down. I'm trying to use two screens. Let me go like this. There we go. Okay. Are you all still with me? You guys still there? Okay, good. So when you scroll down to the bottom, you will notice the option, um, to, create, uh, your, make your blog private. So where it says blog readers, you will click edit and you have the option 
private only blog authors because like Wes said you're going to want to make every teacher an author on your blog so I'm going to click private only blog authors and right here you can see my daughter's the admin I'm using her account so in order to add okay let me go ahead and save that real quick let's save that let me save that real quick okay so now I have made it private and to add authors, just like in Google World, anytime you want to add something, you hit the plus button. So to add authors, you just type in their associated account, which is always their email address. So if I wanted to invite Brooke, I would invite brooke.whitlow at harden.kyschools.us, and I would invite her as an author. And at this point, she's going to get an email, and when she gets that email, she'll have to accept my invitation. So in the short term, you're going to have to invite every teacher to be an author, and then maybe at a faculty meeting, you're going to say, okay, everyone, open your email and click the orange button that says you accept the meeting invite. So right now, you can see I have one open invitation. Now, if Brooke accepts that invitation, I can change her permissions and make her admin as well. So I always tell principals, this is something you would want to do for your assistant principal so they can actually help design the periphery of the blog. Only the teachers would be able to do posts as authors on the blog. I okay. just accepted it if you want to. Okay. Um, okay, it should pop up. I'll come back over to it in just a little bit. Okay, so at this point you have it locked down so that it's private. Only authors are going to be able to see your blog and this is very important. And now you're ready to start uh, working with the layout. Now I always warn principals, this is going to be a little uncomfortable because most principals are not professional um, web page designers. So in order to uh, create the layout of your blog, you go over to the left and click the layout feature. And this is where principals are like, oh, I can't do this. And I'm like, yes, you can. We can do this. There's just a couple things that we need to add to get your blog all lined up and ready to go. So first thing, Wes was talking about gadgets. You'll notice on his blog, he had the pages going across the top. So we're going to click Add a Gadget. And in order to get the pages going across the top, you're going to add the Pages gadget. So in Google World, we always hit the plus. And now... I have the pages gadget and I can add an external link. Let's say I wanted to add my living calendar as an external link that I had created and I'm just going to make up the generic, you paste your living calendar link right there, but I'm just going to put that there as a placeholder. So when I click save, I've now added that gadget and if I go over here to view blog, you will see at the top, I have now added the pages gadget and I can add more page links right here. But the good news is from now on, I don't have to go back through the template. I can just use the wrench and the screwdriver. So from now on, anytime I wanted to add an external link, you just click the wrench and the screwdriver. And you'll see Brooke is now a contributor on my blog, which is really cool. To go back to where we were, we just go back to the top right corner and click design. And if we go back to our layout, there's one more gadget that we wanna add. Uh, remember on Wes's blog, he had a list of data resources, data links, and he had a, another list of PLC blog links. So that is actually called a link list gadget. So in order to add that gadget, I'm going to click add a gadget once again, and I'm going to scroll down and find this one that's called link list, and you can always insert several of these if you like. And most of the time, um, when I work with principals, the first link list that they insert is a link, uh, link list called teacher resources. So let's say your first teacher resource was PGS um, self-reflection uh, protocol. So maybe you have that, and then you paste the link, and I'm just once again gonna do a generic placeholder link, but you would place the link, for the PGS self-reflection protocol that you have. It might be a Google Doc or a Google Slide, and then click Add Link. And after you do that, you'll click Save. And now we have a teacher resources list, um, link list. So if we go back to, let me save arrangement. And if I go back to View Blog, we now have 
two gadgets. We have pages, and these are your big core anchor pieces that you're going to want to put at the top. And then on the right side, we have our first link list. Um, like I said on Wes's blog, it said data systems. He also had one that said PLC blogs. Um, but this one is just where most principals get started with just simple teacher resources. Now, at this point, you're ready to, um, let's actually go back to your design and think about what you want your blog to look out because look like because you have the, the layout finished, but now let's talk about making it look pretty because obviously we can't have an orange um, blog if our, if our school's called the Purple Cow Academy. So in order to make your blog uh, customized with logos and colors and fonts, all you do is click the theme button and you click the orange customize button. And now we have, we can change the background. And if I drop down here, there are lots and lots of themes that we can choose from. There's like a nice little purple theme. That's kind of cool. Um, you can also upload uh, pictures if you like. Uh, right up here it says upload an image. So if you want to upload an image of uh, whatever the case, whatever it may be to put in your background, you could do that as well. Um, so I could choose this purple right here and click done. This is also where, okay, I'm going to change my theme there. Boy, this is really purple. Um, you can also, if you go to the layout, you can play around with the layouts and adjust the widths. But advanced is where you want to spend some time playing. And I always tell principals, this is something that you do when you're like watching TV with your laptop on your lap at night. You, you play around with um, how your blog looks and go to the advanced features. For instance, if I wanted to change the blog title, make it Georgia, make it bigger, change the color, this is where you could do all of this. The tab text, I could make these Georgia make them purple, whatever you want to do. But after you finish um, adjusting in the design feature, you click apply to blog and your theme is applied. And let's go back to blogger. And now, um, and of course, uh, this isn't the prettiest blog, but I'm just doing this in a hurry so you can kind of get, get an understanding. Um, at this point, uh, this is what our blog would look like. Now, I would recommend, because you're going to have a big old list of contributors, I'd hit that little wrench and um, screwdriver and remove that because you don't want a big old list there. You want more room for link lists and stuff like that. So if I refresh, that should have just gone away. Um, also, up here at the top, I always tell principals, you don't necessarily need the home button. So we always remove that and click save. Let me exit out of that. And if I refresh the blog, that has gone away. Now, this is my favorite part, talking about posts. Because the, the main thing in the beginning that you saw was that we use this blog for meeting agendas. And we put the meeting agendas on a new post. So if you go up here in the top right corner, you will see where you can create a new post. You'll see that button. And we would call this post title faculty meeting, and we always put the date, so maybe it's today, October 19th, uh, 2018 or 17. Okay, so if you wanted to put a video, and Wes was talking about um, us using this and embedding videos and really tending to the culture, we'd always started our meetings with music and fun. So if I go to YouTube, let's say we're celebrating some really great student growth and I'm looking for the song Celebration. Well, there it is, Cool in the Gang. So I'm gonna click that video and when everyone goes to our blog at the start of the meeting, this video will be there and also we're projecting the agenda and we can play this video as well. And then this is where you would put agenda. And maybe the first thing that you were going to do is gratitude, uh, gratitude circle or gratitude to everyone. Then the next thing you're reviewing that PLC protocol, whatever. And this is where you could actually link in wherever that PLC protocol is. You could link it. And I'm, I don't have the link. I'm just doing a generic link once again. But when I click OK, now 
as uh, people move through this meeting agenda, they would just click this link and it would take them to that PLC protocol. And then we might end with uh, next steps or whatever the case may be. So after I get my agenda placed on this post, I just hit publish, save, I'm sorry, and then publish. And now if I view the blog, I have my meeting agenda, I have cool in the game, sending to the culture, the colors, all that good stuff. So let me stop cool in the game. I always love that song. Um, and that's basically how you build a blog. The only other thing that people get excited about, if I go back to design, how do I get my logo at the top? You notice that Wes had an astronaut. In order to do that, you would just go to the header. And if you click edit, you can actually choose an image from your computer. And we would always make our images on a Google slide and then save them as a JPEG. And when you upload that image and click save, Instead of this, where it says Purple Cow Academy, um, we would replace this with the image that really reinforced our staff theme. So for like Kathy Gibbs and JCPS, there's like a picture of, of James Dean driving a car for night riding. I know Beth Brandenburg did something with a garden, so you could replace that. Okay, so let me get out of... Um, share mode. There's Brooke again. Hey, lady, I'm going to mute. And hopefully that was good enough and you guys got some ideas on how to build a blog. Well, I'm, I'm going off the cuff here. So listen, I'm a fly by the seat of my pants kind of gal. So as you were talking, I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to share a couple of tools to kind of help you do what Heather was talking about. Um, because I am super into the way things look visually. I, um, I think that that's very important when you're talking about, especially using Blogger as a as a storytelling kind of piece. And so what Heather was talking about, I'm going to go ahead and screen share real quick and just show you a couple of different little tricks. Um, somebody unmute and tell me that that we're good there. Y'all, y'all have see me? Are we good? You're good. Okay, sweet. Um, so here's the blog that, that Heather just did, and I wanted to show you a little trick. Now, I don't want anybody to freak out, okay, but I'm going to do a right click on this header, and one of the, the tricks that I do when I'm designing things the way, um, and trying to get things the way exactly that I want them to look, I use this little tool here called Inspect. Um, and what this is going to do is bring up the HTML of your page. Now, again, don't nobody panic, okay? So see this right here? I'm going to click header. Um, and when I click that, you'll notice um, where my mouse is. See this, change, this color changing right here? So this tells me exactly how big that header is. Um, so if you're like, you know, I like it that size, but I don't really want it to be that way. I want to make my own with my own school logos and my own, you know, just like Heather was saying with her, um, you know, they do it on a Google slide. But this right here tells you exactly how big that is. One of my favorite beginner design tool things is canva.com. And one of the features on Canva, it allows you to use custom dimensions. So if you look at this, okay, so look, I'm going to go back over here. It tells me it's 940 by 147. So I can literally type that in here. I just forgot what it was, 940 by 147. And then what Canva allows me to do it brings up the exact pixel dimensions that I need to put on my blogger. And so at this point, I can hopefully, let's see, we have the spinning wheel of death here. Um, okay, so here is my header image. And Canva is a really cool tool. Um, there's a lot of stuff on Canva you have to watch out for that is paid. So if it has, um, you know, a, um, a watermark on it, like if I typed in computer, here. So some of this stuff is obviously paid, um, but some of it is free. So you can kind of scroll down there and find your own uh, pixel art. But what's really powerful for me is the uploading feature. So I can actually just upload like my school logo or whatever into Canva. Um, 
and then download whenever I'm done I can download that as a photo and then put it directly into your blogger um, which is a really fun tool to really customize the look of your blogger another tool that we're gonna um, add into the resources for your um, for our episode today is Colorzilla and Colorzilla is a Chrome extension that allows you to match colors. Now you guys are seeing me wave my nerd flag pretty loud and proud today. Um, so, but, but I like, again, just like Heather said, I mean, I think the visual component is important when we're talking about storytelling. So when you um, click that little Chrome extension, it's gonna allow me to actually choose colors. So if I go over here and click my Colorzilla Chrome extension, I can say pick color from page. And so what it's gonna do is, let me try that again. Oh, see, there it is, see, it made my color, and it copied that exact color to my clipboard. So what I can do now is paste that color into, just like Heather showed you under the advanced settings, um, whenever you go, you're going into Blogger. So lots of uh, cool options there with Canva and Colorzilla to customize um, your actual blogger appearance. Another thing too, if you're like, okay, Brooke, you're over my head, you're, you're talking nerd talk right now. Um, I did wanna go in here and just mention in Google Slides that you can also customize the size of your Google Slides. So I can say I wanted this by 940 by 147 um, to make it that exact size that was just on my um, blogger. And so now if you're more comfortable using um, Google Slides versus Canva, then you can go in here and still design it and customize it to make it however big or whatever size you want it to be. So just, I could not end this episode without talking to y'all about some of my nerdy like design things. So I hope. I love that. Get involved with Kentucky Go Digital. Attend regional events, like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or follow us on Twitter.